Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Jacqueline. I'm Jacqueline St. James. Welcome to part two of my 25 questions that you guys asked me to answer truthfully. So we're just going to get right into it because there's a lot of questions and these are some good questions that you guys have asked. Um, let's see. The last one we asked was the sexiest part of a guy that I like to kiss. That was the neck region. You can see that in yesterday's show. Okay, so going on, number 17. Do you think you will be Jacqueline way into your senior life? God, I hope no. Um, but you know, I actually met two women or two guys who do female impersonation drag, and they are, I would, I don't quote me on, on age, but I want to say they're in the late 50s, early 60s, and they're still going strong, and I love them. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if, you know, I'll have a reason to do it. Um, you know, I don't do, you know, I don't get up on stage. I don't, I don't do that. I don't know if, I'll, I don't know if Jacqueline will do that. I don't know if, I just don't, I don't know. I just, I want to, but I, I'm very shy and I'm very nervous. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand. Okay. You know, there are certain drag queens that, you know, they're a man and then they get dressed into their character and they become that character. But it's a little different for me because when I was growing up, I always wanted to be a woman. Um, I don't now. I, I like being a guy. But when I dressed in Jacqueline, this is just the woman that's inside me. So it's, there's no there's no difference. You know, I don't have that jump into a, another character. I, this is me, but it's just, you know, it's the, it's the girl in me. So um, I don't have that second second character so I, when I you know if I come out as Jacqueline it's I'm actually just me you know this is how I am in normal life it's just you know I throw it up a notch or two you know throw on a couple of you know outfits and appendages <laughs> but um yeah it's it's a um it's weird it's really weird um I don't know how to explain it other than that it's just that it's not it's not a character for me it, it's me so when I, if I want to get out there, you know, I do get shy. I'm even shy when I go out on the dance floor and dance with all of you. You know, I get very nervous and, you know, I'm always worried about what people think. And I know you shouldn't be, but you know what, growing up, I had a very hard childhood in, in school and it just, it scarred me and I can't get past it. So, and I know all my friends are like, oh, just who cares? And if I have to hear it one more time, it's just like, oh, you don't understand. It's like when a woman gets right, she will never forget it. And that's basically what it is. And, you know, I personally can't get past it, but you know what? It takes a lot to go out dressed like this when no one else is. So I, I kind of give myself credit for the steps that I've had taken. You know, I do occasionally get up on the stage and dance with the rest of the people. Um, I I do other things and to where I'm a little bit more out there than I used to be, you know, but anyway. Okay, so answer your question. Do I think I'll be doing it in my senior life? If there is a need or a reason or a cause for me to do it, I would say so, but I don't see it happening. I don't see Jacqueline being your disco diva well into, you know, her 60s. But um, even even back then, they had to take their breaks. So, okay. Let's see, number 18. Who is the part, who is your part in Sex in the City, and what about the Golden Girls? Oh, this one's easy. Um, this is actually kind of funny. Um, I actually never watched Sex in the City. But I was at a friend's house who used to take his sweet ass time getting ready, Todd. But um oh I'm sorry. <laughs> Sandy Bottoms. I mean Sandy Shores. Bottoms. But anyway, um and I he would always be watching Sex in the City movies. It wasn't the show, it was the movies. And it was so funny because I can see all four of you know, my you know, or all three of my close friends in this in this show. And I would have to say that in Sex and the City, I was definitely <laughs> Samantha. Yes, I do like my men's. And <laughs> I like my men's. And in the Golden Girls, well, that one's easy. That would be Blanche. Yes. Um, again, I like my men. <laughs> okay, let's see. Do you want kids? Hell no. I hate kids. I don't even like looking at kids. I can't stand being kids. And lately, I've gone to restaurants now and requested not even to be near children. I just, I can't stand them. I'm not, I'm not one to be a mother. I'm not one to be a father. I just, other kids, fine, you know, they go home, but no. I, Jacqueline St. James does not want kids. So to all you men out there who want to date me, I don't want kids and it's not going to happen. You know, it's, if you have kids and they're with their mother... 
you know, maybe I could play stepmother for a while, but I just, I don't want kids. I don't want to be a soccer mom. I ain't giving up my two-seater convertible for a mini, uh, a minivan or a sport utility. I'm not doing it. Sorry. But I have been wanting a sport utility. <sighs> I'm not ready to put that magnetic soccer ball in the back of my car. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um... What was your best sex ever? Oh, Lord, another one. Um, okay. There's this guy. And you know what? I'm, who cares? I'm just going to say it. And I apologize to my mother and my sister and my family out there, but you know what? It's sex, baby. And everybody has it. Maybe not as much as I've had it, but people have it. Okay, so there's this guy. His name is Joe. He lives in South Carolina. And I'm getting moist just thinking about him. <laughs> he is, oh my God, he is amazing. He's got a beautiful body. <sighs> Huge penis. <laughs> Here goes Coco. Huge penis. <sighs> but he, he, and oh, I've never seen a man who can do it and do it and do it and keep going and finish and keep going and finish and keep going and finish and keep going. I think we did, oh my God, this fan, I'm sorry. Um, I think we did it 10 times in one night and we're talking full length sex and him climaxing and still going. I had enough. It was so bad that the seats were so soaked with God knows what. And it was see-through. I swear to God, you can see through the sheets. That's how wet they were. They were sticking to me. I know you didn't want to hear all that, but you guys asked. So, <laughs> but it, yes, he was the best sex I've ever had. And I've never found another man ever to do it again like him. Okay, so let's see. Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? No, I don't have a boyfriend, nor do I have a girlfriend. Will I want a girlfriend? No. Um, been down that road, had several, I've had sex with women, it's not my thing anymore. I'm done and over with that. I'm the woman now, so, <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, I have a, I don't have a boyfriend right now. Um, I do have a really good friend that I do, um, we do have, you know, um, a very good friendship with each other here in Fort Lauderdale. Alan, thank you. And, um, but as for boyfriend, no, I don't, I don't have a boyfriend right now. Okay, let's see. Um, do you enjoy your celebrity star status? The honey, I wish I was a celebrity star to enjoy the status. But I will have to say, I will say this. Let me take a sip first. Until recently, I've been doing this now for about four or five years. And there is one place that has always made me feel like a star. And I'm going to tell you where first. It was Club Boom at first, and um, I had a really great time, and it's only because of one bartender, and that's how it started, Sal DeFalco, and you guys know I've talked about him a thousand times, so I, and I can't tell you how much that he treated me with respect, loyalty, um, just, I felt like a star. And I would have to say, celebrity star status, definitely. I've always felt it at Boom, um, and now Hunters. Now that Hunters has taken over, I, I feel it more now than I did at Boom. Um, of course, now more people know me, and it is great to go into a place and people automatically know you. And it's it's a little it's a little weird at times because it's it's just kind of like oh, <laughs> everybody they know me. You know, or, you know, and there's, I remember when the beer garden was open, you know, I'd be, I was walking to the manor once for a, for the Golden Globes, and I remember, I can't remember her name, but there was a drag queen that yelled out, and she's like, hey, Jacqueline, you know, and it's just like, oh, hi, you know, and um, I go into restaurants or stores, and people notice me. They don't know me as a guy, but it's only when Jacqueline goes out. Certain people do know me as a guy, and I've only, I've only allowed myself to be seen by certain people. Uh, I kind of like this, the second, the you know, the double identity. You never know. I could be standing next to you. You could be talking about me, so you better watch out. Um, <laughs> but, no, I'm, you know, it's just, oh, my God. If you, cause if you guys see what I look like during the normal week, I have a goatee and I have a shaved head. You wouldn't even believe it, but um, here's a picture. I don't know if you can see it. That's me. 
That's it. That's all you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah, so my goatee grows fast. Um, part Italian, so hair grows everywhere fast. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, my goatee grows in by like Thursday. Like I said, I only do this on Sunday. So my goatee's full by Thursday. I got shadow by Tuesday night. Thursday it's almost full. Friday is full. Saturday's full. And then God, I have to shave it. And I hate shaving it. But I do it for you guys. And myself, of course. Just for this one day. Okay. What's your favorite place to eat? Um, oh, my God, it's here. My favorite place to eat. Well, it's not here. Um, I don't really have a favorite restaurant here in Fort Lauderdale. But I do have a restaurant called Miyabi's in Myrtle Beach. Ah, oh, love it. It used to be called Kyoto's. It's one of those uh, Japanese steakhouses. And I've tried steakhouses down here, and nobody compares to it. I'm sorry. Judy, if you're out there, you know what I'm talking about. Just absolutely delicious. I just love it. It's so great. I think her son used to work there. I'm not sure if he's still there, but he used to work there. It's just such a great restaurant. That was one of my favorites. Uh, for ice cream, um, my favorite is Friendly's. I grew up with Friendly's. We had a Friendly's right down the block. And I still say to this day that I was the inventor of black raspberry and peanut butter sauce. The black raspberry ice cream and peanut butter sauce. But now it's on the menu. So I think it's thanks to me. But anyway, that was my favorite. I had only, I think out of the whole time that I've ever grew up with Friendly's, I only had three flavors. Mint chocolate chip, black raspberry, and their watermelon uh, ice cream during the summer. Oh, so good. And we have one here in... Um, is it Dayton? Not Daytona. Um, not Deland. That's that other one. It's just right up from here. I can't think of the name. Oh, shoot. You have to Google it. It's it's up near, like, a little bit before you get to West Palm. I can't think of the name. It starts with a D. Delray Beach. Okay, let's see. Oh, and my favorite fast, uh, favorite fast food would be White Castle. I grew up with that at home. Um, not a big fan of White Castle. Uh, Anything else down here? I do try my crystals. It's not the same. I don't hold against me, but it gives me some sort of feeling as if it was White Castle. But anyway. Okay. Um. Do you ever do drugs? Did you ever do drugs? I never. I never just say like I did drugs. I never just sat there and like just smoked marijuana or anything. I was in a car with this girl named Christy and her friend, and they were driving. And, oh, I did do drugs. Yeah, I'm a bad girl. Um, okay, so we were in the car. I was in the back seat. I was so nervous because, of course, I was that, you know, the nervous goody-goody. And we were sitting in the back of her car. They were driving. And I was so scared that we were going to get arrested or we were going to get to an accident because she was smoking. So I told them, I said, to pull over, I would drive and they can sit in the back and smoke. Well, honey, I got a second hand high off the marijuana. So, <laughs> needless to say, that, you know, that was the thing. And the only other time I ever did drugs was, well, I didn't realize what it was. I had a massage once in Orlando. Um, the, the gentleman came to my house. And it was one of, and, and you know, I knew what it was for. It wasn't just a massage. But anyway, I, I felt like I could trust him. He was very nice. He asked me if I wanted to try it. I said, sure. Well, needless to say, I didn't realize it was the date rape drug. Was that GXB or something like that? I don't know. But, um, yes, I tried it. It was disgusting. It tasted like metal. It was something that you... Oh, I'm sorry. This damn fan. Um, it was tasted like metal. It was like something that you put in water as, like, drops or something. It was gross. It was, ugh, it was nasty. But it was hot. But will I ever do it again? No. I don't do drugs. I don't believe in drugs. I don't believe that there's a need for drugs. And I don't even, like, really even drink alcohol that much. I... I just don't think that, you know, you need to do drugs to have fun or sex or anything else. But anyway, I was a learning experience. Okay, number 25. Yes, I'm a goody-goody. What can you say? I, I can't help it. I was told when I was growing up, don't do drugs, don't get drunk, you know, all those things. And, you know, I would be the one in the horror film that would live forever. Okay, <laughs> last question. Were you bullied as a kid every day of my life? Ah, oh, Lord, yes, I was bullied all the time, every day at school, you know, and that's why when certain people tell me I should just get over it, you know, I should get over it, it's been years since high school, it's not easy to get over something like that, it's, you know, I, I'm very, what do you call it, for bullying, and 
it's you know it was very hard i i moved down from south carolina i mean i was teased a little bit in new york too i was always teased i was just i was always teased i was gay i mean it's always feminine i i just liked feminine things and i played feminine roles and but um no it was really bad in middle school and high school I mean, it was bad to where people wanted to beat me up. We wanted to have fights, meet in the parking lot. And, of course, I couldn't defend myself because when I met him in the parking lot, I would have to, you know, there was five other of his friends, you know, to gang up on me. So the fights never took place. And, um, but I never really defended myself. And I, I think that's what hurt me because I never stood up for myself. And I think had I stood up for myself... It wouldn't have gone as bad as it did. I mean, we're talking all the way to 11th grade. And 11th grade, I, I was this close to dropping out of school. And I couldn't take it anymore. I wanted to kill myself. I just, I didn't want to do it anymore. And, I mean, it was painful. It was very painful. I, I remember to this day, like, I dreaded lunch period because I really didn't have a lot of friends. Because friends didn't want to stay my friend because they were afraid they would be called names too. So I was pretty much alone all the time. I was the kid that was very quiet in class. I sat towards the front. I was near the teacher. Um, I tried not to bring any kind of attention to myself. And the worst was lunch. I remember lunch. It was just, oh, God, I still remember to this day. Just walking into the cafeteria with my food and right away walking, because we had an outside area, and I would go outside because I, I just couldn't sit in the lunchroom. And I would hope and pray that my one friend was here that day. And if they weren't here that day, then I was, you know, I was alone. It was awful. It was just, it was so awful. I remember having a girlfriend and being teased while I had a girlfriend that I was gay. You know, and just, it was just, it was just really, it was a painful experience. And I dread, it's like, right now we have our high school reunion coming up and everyone's asking me, are you going to the high school reunion? And I'm like, please, what the hell would I want to go there for? You no. Know? So, you know, we have, people have got to stop the bullying. It's, it's awful. It really is. But, um. It's bad, and it should be treated as a crime, and that's how I feel about it. So anyway, well, I hope that helps you in getting to know Jacqueline St. James just a little bit more, and thank you guys for all your questions. I'm sorry if I didn't get to all of the questions. I, I wasn't expecting so many, and let me tell you exactly how many I've had, because I went down the line, and every, every time you guys wrote one, I wrote it down on a piece of paper, and I categorized it, and... I, I can't even believe I had 425 questions that were asked in three days. Let's just put it that way. For, and we're talking like all over the world. And it's amazing when I sit here and I tell you I don't perform on stage. I, I it's just it's that's not never been my thing. I've only done my videos. I've danced at the clubs. I've promoted clubs, and that's all I've done. And my videos are watched all around the world. And it's, it's totally amazing. It's it's bizarre when I get someone from England or Australia who contacts me or, I, you know, Kenya. I, I help these two guys. They, it's another whole long story, but two guys who were in Africa who um, were being hunted by their families because they were gay. And, you know, I helped them find, you know, some refuge with England. And I'm very proud of that. Um, you know, and they thanked me, and they're there, and they're safe, and they were brought into England. They're allowed to be there. So I'm very happy for that couple. I hope they're to get still together. And um, it's just, you know, I, it's just... got to stop the bullying. But anyway, um, it, it's just amazing on all the things. I know I totally went off on the bullying. I'm, I'm totally lost. <laughs> this is Jacqueline. This is how she runs. But... Um, no, I, I was just very, I'm very surprised and, and how many people that I do touch. And I want to thank all of you out there for being my fan and for watching my shows and promote, uh, promoting my shows and sharing my videos and talking to me and being my friend. And, you know, I just, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. And I just love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I, so you guys are all friends and family and I just absolutely adore you and keep, keep watching and, I know I've, I've been up and down with where I'm going in my videos and everything, but Jacqueline's here to stay for a while. She may take a break, but she's here to stay. So anytime you got a question, give me, you know, just contact me on Ask Jacqueline. You can go to my website at www.jacquelinestjames.weebly.com. That's my website. You can see all the shows, everything that I do. And, of course, I'm on Facebook. Just look for me, Jacqueline. So 
Again, thanks for your questions, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.